Hello guys, welcome to a new video. In this video, we are going to fix and install Need for Speed High Sticks on a modern Windows OS. This is actually a follow-up for the previous video that I made for the same game. In that video, I could not show you how you can use the Direct 3D option and as it was having a glitch on my PC and, was, and I was receiving a black screen. So in this video, we are going to fix this issue too. First of all, we have to install the game on your hard disk. I am going to install it, open the CD and go to setup.exe. Select the language and click on OK. It is taking some time, this is normal. Okay, the setup has started. Click on next, yes. Set the installation directory. I'm setting it to F. From here, you can use the full install option because this is actually what, uh, what is the, this is actually the setting, setting that I normally use. You can also use the minimum and typical options, but I don't know if it will work. But I think it may also work and I am not against it because the game will use the movie files from the disk even after you install a no CD patch. So we have, I am going to install it with full. Let's see. The game will install quick because it is a old game and the modern operating system have greater specs and performance. So the game is installed, click on yes for shortcut. This will naturally occur on modern Windows OS because the program cannot run in that environment. Click on register later. Okay, after that we have to install the patch. For that download the patch that I provided in the description and we have to first of all install the version 4.5 patch. The patch is installed. Okay. Copy the executable file to the game directory overwriting the original one. Okay. After you do that, we are going to start with the software mode and there are different modes for 32 bit and 64 bit operating system. Since I am using 64 bit OS, I am going to open the soft 64 registry file. Click on yes. Okay. Now let's run the game. Okay, this is the exception caught error. This might occur randomly, but you should be good enough. Uh, your PC will be good enough to run the game without any much problem. Let's try again. Cards. Okay, this time the game ran. I'm lowering the sound because so that I can talk to you. You can also change the resolution for software mode. I'm turning off white screen because this actually casts down the lower part of the screen. You can also change other settings. Uh, okay, we are done with it. Now let's start a race. Enter circuit, okay. Okay, so here we are running the game on the software mode and the graphics seems proper as it should look on the software mode. The textures are blocky as it is expected and the uh, smoke is very blocky as you can see. So we are going to play the game for a moment. Let's see if any crashes occur. Okay, I think it is good enough. Now let's quit the game and move to the next part. 
that is with glide option for using glide you have different emulators but i recommend you to use the dj voodoo or the n glide this is because they have the best and the maximum co uh, compatibility that you can gain with the uh, that you can gain for glide emulation so for dj voodoo open the uh, open and extract the zip file from there you will get the 3dfx folder inside that you will get x86 folder and copy all the dll files to the game directory also copy the control panel to the game directory so that you can set other settings like resolution etc for creating a configuration file in the game directory click on this dot slash for uh, slash option after that we are going to the glide tab so that we can select the glide settings i am selecting it voodoo 2 but you can select any other option i am changing the onboard ram resolution and anti aliasing okay and i am turning off the enable glide gamma ramp also don't forget to uh, don't forget to restart the game for using glide open the glide 64 dot registry for the 64 bit settings after that we are good to go to run the game let's see electronic arts the game is running okay now let's check the graphic settings Yeah, you will get a lot of other options. Yeah, you can get the 1600 by 1200 resolution, and you can also get other settings in advanced settings like triple buffer, zip. Okay, we got a error message. Streams. Okay, this is a normal problem with the game because of the old uh, coding, and this might frequently occur. But don't worry about it because. Uh, because this is not a permanent problem this will occur a few times so we are going to try out again i don't believe it is because of the changing of the settings or z buffer but we are going to try again okay we are good here now let's start a race Okay, the race has started. You can also see that the textures are proper and no more blocky as it was in software mode. You can also see that the reflections are working properly for the front bumper. Let me show you. Okay, I can see uh, show you from this side. Let me see if I can turn the vehicle. Okay, you can now see the reflections are working properly from this angle as I showed you now. Let me show you once again. The car also becomes dark as we move below the mountain. You can see the reflection on the glass. The textures are also loaded properly and there are no graphical corruptions. So we are going to exit this mode this time and we are going to try out the uh, game with the Nglide emulator. Before you do that, delete all the glide.dll files from the root directory of the game. Otherwise, the game will still use the digivoodoo for running the game. For nglide, download the file that I provided in the description and install the app. Let me show you here. Um, okay. Click on yes and click on install. After I do that, open the nglide. Uh, sorry. and glide configurator from the uh, search bar you can select any video backend if you are using a good gpu and a less powerful cpu then you can use the vulkan api because it uh, provides most of your workload to your gpu instead of the cpu for example if you are running the game or is, uh, if you are playing the game and doing some other work that uh, involves your cpu like 
like video encoding on your CPU etc that, that time you can use the Vulkan API so that most of your uh, game work had, uh, game workload are for the CPU are moved to your GPU this is done using the Vulkan API if you have a lower end PC like a very old uh, Pentium PC or uh, Core i3 old PC then you can use the DirectX option because it will provide equal workload on both GPU and CPU so I'm going to start with the DirectX API first. I'm not going to show the Vulkan API because uh, there will be no difference as I'm not using any uh, MSI Afterburner or any other app for showing the FPS. Please note that Vulkan is not supported by all the GPUs. If you are using uh, Intel HD graphics, then Vulkan might not be available. This is applicable only on new GPUs that is uh, probably released after 2015 or 14 etc. And if you buy a GPU from that era, you can get the Vulkan option. Or if you were using a high-end or enthusiast level graphics card from the 2011-12 era, then you might also get that option. So, uh, so Vulkan is not applicable for all. So I'm going to show you DigiVoodoo because it is, uh, sorry, not DigiVoodoo, DirectX because it is available for everyone to use. So here you can see that the Englide emulator uh, runs the game properly too. And there is no bugs, uh, there is no bugs as you saw in DigiVoodoo. The performance is same as DigiVoodoo as I show here. But if your PC has a less capable hardware, then you should consider using the Nglide emulator. As I told earlier, the, the DirectX option of the Nglide emulator uses less CPU and less GPU. So you can get a good experience if you are using the Nglide emulator. So I think this is the end of the Glide emulation. So now let's move to the last part, this is software emulation. Okay, we got an error message, but it should not be much serious. So let's first of all change the registry settings. For that I'm going to open the D3D64 registry file. Click on yes, okay. Now let's run the game with the default D3D.dll file. Sorry to say, I researched further and I saw that the game crashes when loading the D3D.dll file for a FTH error, means fault tolerant heap. I think this is because of the old generation coding and uh, incompatibility of of older APIs on modern uh, Windows APIs. So I think this fix is impossible. So I am going to use the direct 7 or 8 or 9 DLL files to run the game. First of all, I am going to use the direct 7 DLL file. For that, copy the file to the, the, uh, to the NFS high stakes directory and rename it to d3d.dll file. After that, the most important part is that you have to run the control panel executable, go to the DirectX tab, choose any video card except the virtual SVGA card because this is probably not going to work as this game does not use SVGA. I am going to set this to virtual 3D accelerated card and from here select the VRAM to any option lesser than 1 GB. I found that in the last video I set it to probably 2 GB in the game fail to run or I ignored the step of using DigiVoodoo to run in direct 3D mode. So I think you should follow this step sincerely and run the game with less than 1 GB VRAM. I am going to show you with 512 MB this time. I tested it on 1 GB and I saw that any VRAM settings less than 1 GB works properly. So you can also change other settings but they don't have any impact. But the VRAM is the most important option because this was the problem of which we were unable to play the game. This fix is applicable for all and if you are uh, if you are not able to play the game then you should use this fix. I think we have to change the setting again because I did not run the file with administrator. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, okay, it seems proper. I think we did not change the registry. Let's see. No, it's okay. 
I think uh, uh, it's okay. Let me run the history files again because the game was not running in the 1080p resolution. Okay, now let's try this time. Uh, the settings are okay. Let's see. I don't know why it is using the old resolution. Let's proceed further. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I forgot to copy the uh, MS slash uh, files from the MS slash x86 folder. So the Digivoodoo was not working. Sorry, sorry again. So we have to copy the files uh, to this folder. Okay, this should work properly now. Okay, you can now see that the activate window setting is now in full resolution. I actually don't activate windows because this allows me to see if I am using the correct resolution of the game. Okay, now let's move to the graphics option. And now you can see that the that the old problem where we had a bad text index message is now fixed. You can now get all the resolutions and now I'm going to set it to a 32 bit option. I'm going to turn off white screen and I'm going to increase all the other settings. So now let's run the game. As you see here, the black screen problem is no longer available. You can also see that the color is now 32 bit as, and it was not available in the glide option. So if you were one, if you want to use the 32 bit color options, then direct 3D mode is the only option available. The glide and software mode does not provide you with 32 bit colors. So that's why I focus on the direct 3d part of older games so this is a fix that that will work surely for you if the the if the game does not run uh, properly with the direct 3d mode and you receive a black screen okay so here the game also runs stable guys okay now let's quit the game and i'm going to end the video here So the final part, final line I want to say that if you are running, uh, if you are having trouble in running the game or you get a corrupted, uh, corrupted files error, please see that you are setting the registries correctly. If the registry files don't work properly, then set it manually and you can also change other settings in the registry. After that, if you get, uh, if you get problems like black screen, please see that if uh, you have installed nglide or digivoodoo properly. If you have done that, you have to see which API you are using. It is, uh, it is Direct 3D or Glide. If you are using Glide, see that if you if you have copied the correct files, and if you are using D3D, see that you have done the same. So after that, you have to see that if you are using the Direct 3D option, you have to set the video memory to 1024 MB if you are getting a black screen. So this these are these were all the fixes that I showed in the video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and as always stay tuned for more videos. Bye for now.